close your eyes and watch your breath. Be with the breath as it comes in and the breath as it goes out. Try to keep your mind right here, keep your attention right here. There may be thoughts in different parts of the mind, but you don't have to pay them any attention. The breath is still here. It's a matter of your choosing to stay right here and try to stay here consistently. The Pali word for meditation, bhavana, means to develop. You're trying to develop some consistency. Because you could simply add the breath to all the other things that you're paying attention to. But that doesn't make a difference. It's when the mind stays focused in one place. That's what makes a difference in the mind. You learn to withstand a lot of the currents that go flowing around in different directions. It's like keeping your boat on a river. There are currents coming from the left and the right, but you want to go straight ahead. So you make sure you don't let yourself get pushed around by the other currents. Today we're making merit for people who passed away. This is the commemoration of a John Fuang's passing 34 years ago. People have come to make merit for relatives who passed away too. You know, think about it, when you're making merit, it's like providing for the happiness of another person, and you want to make sure that their happiness is complete. So you want to make sure the causes for happiness are complete. This is why we have generosity and the virtue, the virtue of observing the precepts, but particularly the meditation, because the meditation is what animates the other two. The state of your mind animates your generosity, the state of your mind animates the virtue. If with generosity you're simply going through the motions, there is some merit, but not much, because you don't appreciate what you're doing. You have to think about it. Here you have more than enough and you're willing to share. And there's a sense of inner wealth that comes with that realization. The same with virtue. There are times when you could break the precepts, but you stand on principle. You realize that you're a more honorable person than that. And there's a sense of happiness that comes with that, a sense of inner worth, self-esteem. That's the real merit in virtue. And the same with meditation. You learn that all the troubles that weigh the mind down come from the mind itself. So you're taking responsibility for your suffering, realizing that it's something that you can get past. And that gives you a sense of your own power, your own strength. You're taking a noble position toward your suffering. This is why the Four Noble Truths are noble. You don't blame your suffering on other people. You don't just lie around waiting for someone else to come and help you. You take responsibility. You develop the power inside. That's there in potential form. And taking responsibility, you become a reliable person, a noble person. So there's a sense of well-being that comes with all of these activities, if you do them with appreciation. And then you can send that sense of well-being, dedicated to others. If they have any way of knowing, then they appreciate it. Okay, that appreciation then becomes their merit. So a lot of the merit lies in appreciation. You are looking for happiness in a way that doesn't harm anybody. There are so many ways of looking for happiness in the world that do cause harm. We see them all around us, people trying to gain power, people trying to gain wealth, trying to gain fame. And in doing so, they harm themselves sometimes and oftentimes place a big burden on other people. But with the activities of making merit, generosity, virtue, and meditation, you're developing your own inner resources. You don't have to take anything away from anyone else. You don't have to oppress anybody else in your search for your happiness and the happiness that you want to share with others. And this is a noble activity. So have some appreciation for making merit. As the Buddha said, it's another word for happiness, a true happiness, a happiness that's blameless. And because there's so little of that happiness in the world, and yet the 
potential for finding it is so broad. If everyone looked for happiness in this way, we'd have a lot fewer problems. So we should appreciate it when we have the motivation to make merit in any of these three ways. We should appreciate it when we see it in others. In that way, it's like having a lit candle. You light the candle of other people. The flame in your candle is not diminished, but the brightness around you actually gets increased. <laughs>